If you are a fan of John Mayer's gear, then you will know all about the Way Huge Aquapus Mark One. This is one of I'd say five Holy Grail John Mayer pedals that he's used over his entire career that kind of fall into the category of unobtainium. You know, ultra rare, very difficult to get and find and actually add to your collection if you're looking to get one. I searched for over two years to try and actually get one of these refreshing reverb multiple times a day, over probably 20 times a day to try and find one. I missed out multiple times, bought one, then the seller canceled the deal because I think someone I'd offered him more money. It was just craziness for quite a few years to try and actually find one of these pedals. And then in my personal case, one of you guys actually reached out to me who owned a mint condition AP2 version, and I came to agreement and purchased it off of one of you. So if you're watching, thank you so much for letting me add this to my collection. But I'm making this video today because you guys know I'm a massive fan of this pedal. I absolutely love it. It's ridiculous, it's a slapback delay, but it's, it's, I love it. I love these vintage way huge pedals. And because this pedal was so difficult to get for such a long time, the fact that there have been three that are sitting on reverb for quite a while now, I just think is really ridiculous and I just wanted to discuss it with you guys. Because for the longest time, if one did show up on reverb, it would just be up there for maybe five minutes, if that, and someone would buy it or send in a very competitive offer and it'd be sold. And you, that'd be it. You had no hope. You pretty much had to be one of the first people to actually see it pop up on Reverb and just be willing to, right there and then, spend a lot of money on one of these pedals. But the three that have been sitting up on Reverb are definitely overpriced in my opinion, and that's certainly why they have been sitting on Reverb. But I wanted to kind of dive into the listing and just discuss this because this is a little bit unprecedented when it comes to John's gear and those of you who want to collect the pedals that he used or try them out. To see three octopuses sitting on reverb, I've just never seen. Three Mark Ones, never seen before. So let's dive into it a little bit. Now, just as an ultra quick refresher, there are two versions of the Mark One octopus, the AP1 and the AP2. George Tripps made 346 total Mark One octopuses, making this pedal just exceptionally rare as it is. And John used the AP2 version from about the start of the John Mayer Trio era in 2005, all the way until about 2012, 2013, the Born and Race in Paradise Valley eras. And then from that point forward, anytime we've seen John using a Mark One octopus, it's always been the AP1 version. And there are less AP1 octopuses than there are AP2s. So that also means that the AP1 just has a smaller production run within the 346 that were made. And then of course, because that's the one John has been using for the past decade at least, all that kind of helps make that a little bit of the dearer one. And the AP1, very easy to tell when you're looking at them because the pots and actually the labels are different. So on an AP1, you have blend, feedback, and then delay. And then on my AP2, you have delay, feedback, and then mix. It's not called blend. Now the blend and feedback knobs are actually reversed where they go from the least amount kind of towards the inside and then to the outside, you go to the highest on the, the pot there. Whereas on the AP2, you know, the Mark IIs, Mark Threes, they all face the same way. So just a few subtle differences there when it comes to John's octopuses and just octopuses obviously in general. But looking at the ones on reverb here, because this is just kind of mind boggling to me here. We have three that have been sitting for quite a while now. I've been watching them all just out of pure curiosity's sake because it took me forever to even just find one of these. But we have from, I was gonna say cheapest, but from the least expensive, we have a very late AP2 that's for $3,500 US. And you can tell it's very late because the actual casing is all one piece on the very top kind of front side of the pedal. So it's a later AP2 Mark One, And this one actually has a bad switch. It's mint with a bad switch, which is interesting, but $3,500 US for one with a bad switch currently. Then we move on to a Mark One AP2 as well. It's got John's name right in the title, of course. These things kind of tend to do, which is why John blocks out pedals that he tries because he doesn't like people using his name to get a premium for their stuff. This one was originally listed for 6,000 US and now is for five. So it's got a thousand dollar price drop for that one. And then we have an AP one for 10 grand, which is just absolutely absurd. Actually looking at this AP one here, it doesn't even come with the box <laughs> they want 10 grand for. That's, that's absolutely absurd. And kind of the whole point to this video is just to create a bit of discussion, hopefully in the comments, just because 
This is one of the hardest to find John Mayer pedals and it's unobtainium just because there's only 346 of them total made and the prices people ask for them of course are absurd. I didn't pay what either of these are asking. I didn't pay what the cheapest one is asking and mine is in better condition, a little bit of an earlier version and came with the box and manual and everything or the, 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 the sheet that came with it. So that's obviously why these I think are sitting because there was one that was listed not too long ago that actually sold for a decent bit cheaper. Yeah, so this one here was listed a couple of weeks back for 1900 euros, about 2200 US. It's not that bad of a price for an AP1 version, but obviously these other three have been sitting because number one, the gear market has changed. The amount of people who are, I feel like going out, especially in the John Mayer gear community and spending just an absolute insane amount of money on gear, that's kind of slowed down a little bit and as well, these also are just asking, in my opinion, and I think if you check, you know, kind of the market on reverb, they're asking quite a lot. So you have a very unique opportunity if you've wanted one of these pedals before, I think, where these are sitting, they're not selling. They've even had just like one offer, like three months ago, one offer on this one for originally 6,000 US. I'm not sure if they have it where it's set where they'll only take like 66% or whatever it is of the ask price. But maybe reach out to the seller and see if you can come to an agreement if you've been wanting one of these and are kind of willing to spend around what they normally do go for. I just think this is really unique that we have three of the most unobtainium John Mayer pedals ever sitting on reverb right now. I never thought honestly I'd see the day because I could not get one for the life of me for the longest time. But yeah, something I just thought was cool, something that's kind of unique to the gear market right now and just something I thought, hey, you know what, I'm gonna put together a little video and just casually chat about it with you guys. I love my Mark I Aquapus, but again, it's a slapback. The Mark III does a really great job about being a little bit of a darker sound tonally wise. So if you're wanting to get this sound with the way huge Aquapus, go for the Mark III. You won't be disappointed, I promise you guys with that one. But if you wanna get the vintage collectors, you know, unobtainium thing, add it to your collection, reach out to one of these guys and let me know if you actually can kind of get one of these sold because I love to see these pedals get into some of your guys' hands if you're in the market for this sort of thing and into John Mayer fans, you know? I think that'd be pretty cool. But anyways, you guys, hope you enjoyed just this discussional video and I hopefully will see some discussion in the comments down below on these pedals. If you own one of them, let me know as well. I know some of you guys do own some of these. Some of you I know own an AP1 and an AP2, which is absolutely crazy, but yeah. Hopefully see some discussion in the comments and I'll chime in as well as always. Thanks for watching today's video. We'll see you on the next one. I have the box in literally mint condition. Um, Josh Scott, you'll be proud. <laughs> My goodness. Anyway, go ahead and click the subscribe button if you like what you see.